In this podcast summary, the host Bill Maher speaks with guest Vivek Ramaswamy. Their conversation spans a wide range of topics, from gardening and traveling to the Iowa State Fair, to how our historical figures were the embodiment of the Renaissance men. Maher draws attention to a younger generation running for presidential roles, such as Ramaswamy, who is 38. They discuss the impressive feats of these individuals at similar ages in history, such as Thomas Jefferson writing the Declaration of Independence at 33 and inventing the swivel chair. Benjamin Franklin, too, gets a nod for his significant contributions. The duo then delves into the evolution of America, touching upon matters of historical hypocrisies and ideals. Ramaswamy makes an interesting point that America's hypocrisies prove it has ideals in the first place. A hypocritical nation has the ideals it falls short of achieving. Sequentially, a significant spotlight is drawn onto the imperfections of human nature, which these ideals aim to transcend. Improvement and progress are acknowledged as intrinsic parts of America's journey, a viewpoint they both resonate with. This leads to another larger conversation about racism and societal progress. They stress the importance of recognizing the work still needed to be done without succumbing to the phantoms of past racism. Marr reflects his mantra of living in the year we're living in and casts a critical eye over those who insist on the past defining our present. Ramaswamy also candidly speaks about his run for the presidency and how he's comfortable just presenting himself to the public as he is. If they vote for him, great. If not, he's okay with that decision, too. He's been seen playing college tennis while on campaign trail and has even rapped an Eminem song at the Iowa State Fair. Marr humorously suggests that he shouldn't rap again, recalling a similar scene not going well in the TV show Succession. Ramaswamy's drastic ideas of getting rid of the FBI and IRS come up. Marr seems dubious, but Ramaswamy invites him to have an open mind. He argues that the FBI is a failed institution, referencing its controversial history, and argues that local law enforcement could fulfill the role the FBI plays. The conversation offers a profound mix of humor, candid reflections, political commentary, and controversial ideas. With more than two hours into the Club Random podcast with host Bill Maher and guest Vivek Ramaswamy, the pair continue to delve into Ramaswamy's radical ideas, specifically about disbanding the FBI. Ramaswamy offers meticulous details about his proposed restructuring of the FBI and how its core functions could be distributed to other organizations. The FBI's effectiveness is brought into question, with Ramaswamy arguing that other organizations, such as the DEA and U.S. Marshals, have proven more effective in tackling issues like child trafficking and the fentanyl epidemic. Ramaswamy provides the example of the FBI having 35,000 employees, 20,000 of whom work at the J. Edgar Hoover building, while the remaining 15,000 are frontline agents working on various crimes, a structure he deems inefficient and redundant. He proposes relocating these frontline agents to institutions like the U.S. Marshals, the DEA, and the Secret Service, all while reducing bureaucratic redundancies. They then discuss a hypothetical situation where the FBI's services might be necessary, such as when a foreign entity like Australia has a lead about a threat to American national security. Marr questions whether an organization like the U.S. Marshals could handle such an international issue, which leads to a discussion on the controversial Trump-Russia investigation. Both agree it's a complex issue, though Ramaswamy rejects Marr's assertion that he does not believe that Trump lost the election, explaining he believes big tech interfered in the election process. Ramaswamy moves the conversation towards his political campaign, expressing his preference for hiring younger individuals who still have their career peaks ahead. Marr brings up the need for wisdom that often comes with age, challenging Ramaswamy's preference for young staffers. This brings them back to discussing the last presidential election, where Marr insists that Ramaswamy, as a nonpartisan politician, should acknowledge Biden as the legitimate winner. Ramaswamy, while not disputing that Biden won, reiterates his concerns about big tech's interference. The conversation continues with a careful dissection of the controversies surrounding Donald Trump's presidency. The potential impeachment of Trump is discussed with Ramaswamy emphasizing that he regards the impeachment as flawed. For Ramaswamy, the constant disputation over Trump and the previous elections distracts from what he feels is true justice arguing that not every bad judgment or act constitutes a crime. 
They discussed the indictments leveled against Trump, with Marr vehemently expressing that he believes Trump attempted to overthrow the U.S. government. Ramaswamy, while distancing himself from Trump's actions, asserts that expressing a view on the outcome of the election, even if it's a lie, is not unconstitutional. The topic shifts back to Ramaswamy's political campaign and his competition against Trump. Marr jocularly accuses Ramaswamy of aiming to be Trump's vice president, an accusation Ramaswamy denies, emphasizing his desire to affect change and impact his loved country positively. The discussion meanders to past presidents and aspirational messages, with both agreeing that Obama, for example, emphasized the notion of the American dream. However, they note that this aspirational message seems less prevalent in recent times. Marr, in particular, feels disheartened by how Obama's message has dwindled and suspects the fault lies not with him changing, but with the shift in general political discourse. In the midst of this conversation, Ramaswamy stays true to his goal. He aims to unite the country rather than focusing solely on past grievances. Acknowledging his cognizance of his guest's critiques of the left, Marr warns Ramaswamy that with his seemingly supportive stance towards Trump, it may be challenging for him to appeal to a broader audience. Regardless, Ramaswamy remains steadfast in his own political principles, determined to make a positive difference. Marr and Ramaswamy delve into the intriguing debate on whether meritocracy or equity should reign supreme in modern America. The contention lays in how these concepts seemingly pull against each other, with Marr claiming the nation is divided into a 50, 50 split on the issue. Ramaswamy, however, believes the ratio leans more towards an 80 to 20 division, with the majority favoring free speech, meritocracy, and self-governance. In their discussion, it becomes evident that Ramaswamy is highlighting bureaucracy as a major antagonist in America's progress. He presents himself as the anti-bureaucracy candidate, looking to trim the fat off the federal government's workforce by a staggering 75 percent. Although Marr questions the feasibility of this figure, hinting at its seemingly arbitrary nature, he agrees that measures towards streamlining are needed. Ramaswamy's rationale emerges from his belief that current government systems are overbloated, inefficient, and fundamentally unresponsive. He points to the FDA as a prime example, arguing that the time and costs associated with getting medicines approved could be significantly cut down if not for the imposing bureaucratic processes. He accuses Big Pharma of embracing these barriers as a means to stifle competition and maintain dominance. Interestingly, both Marr and Ramaswamy are aligned on their view that bureaucracy has the potential to hinder progressive steps from high-speed rail construction in California to housing initiatives. However, where they diverge is on Ramaswamy's radical call to fire 50 to 75 percent of the federal workforce. Ramaswamy further notes that what's fundamentally awry with the current American government is a disconnect between the elected office and the actual execution of power. He alleges a scenario where the executive branch of the American government effectively functions autonomously from the elected president's control due to constraints such as civil service protections. Ramaswamy asserts that such a system is in no way representative of what the founding fathers envisioned. The conversation then takes a philosophical turn as both Marr and Ramaswamy contemplate what founding fathers like George Washington or John Jay would think of America today. Ramaswamy shows a strong conviction in his belief. He is certain they would be appalled at the sight of the current sprawling bureaucracy. An intriguing portion of the Club Random podcast involves hosts Bill Maher and Vivek Ramaswamy debating the role and efficacy of the American government and its many arms. Ramaswamy presents himself as the anti-bureaucracy candidate and accuses Big Pharma and the FDA of stifling competition, implicating them in the decay of America's progress. More subtly, he voices a lamentation of what he perceives as the disconnect between elected office and the actual execution of power. Not only does Ramaswamy assert that bureaucracy hinders progressive steps from high-speed rail construction in California to housing initiatives, but he also lays bare his conviction that the executive branch of the American government operates autonomously. The heart of his argument lies in his belief in the ineffectiveness and unresponsiveness of current government systems. In a fascinating line of discussion, Marr and Ramaswamy contemplate the views of America's founding fathers. Ramaswamy is certain they would be appalled at today's sprawling bureaucracy, suggesting they would see it as a far cry from their envisioned system. Interestingly, they delve into the murky subject of nuclear energy. 
Both converge on the point that the country needs more nuclear energy, but it seems people have an inadequate understanding or interest in the matter. They agree that for the time being, until real green energy can substantially contribute to our power supply, nuclear is a more appealing option than the alternatives. Ramaswamy states that part of the problem lies in the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's safety regulations preventing the construction of new power plants. He argues that newer generation reactors are actually safer than older ones. Yet ironically, in the name of safety, the commission appears to stifle innovation and progress. The debate then segues to electoral politics, with Ramaswamy positioning himself as the candidate willing to forego super PAC money in his campaign. He even extends this invitation to his fellow Republican and Democratic contenders. This bold move is met with skepticism, however, as the complexity of campaign finances seems to pose a tricky obstacle. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice.